Welcome to the New England Journal of Medicine at the 2024 American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Executive Managing Editor of the Journal, and I'm with Eric Rubin, Editor-in-Chief, and Jane Leopold, Deputy Editor. We're talking about the CLEAR trial, Routine Spironolactone in Acute Myocardial Infarction. Jane, why test the hypothesis that the routine use of spironolactone helps in MI with heart failure? That's a great question, Steve. Uh, we know that inhibition of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system with ACE inhibitors improves outcomes after myocardial infarctions or MIs, and that higher levels of aldosterone are associated with increased mortality for, uh, for patients with myocardial infarction. We also know that uh, anti aldosterone antagonism decreases mortality in patients with heart failure and improves outcomes in patients with acute MI and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. What we don't know is whether or not aldosterone antagonism improves outcomes among all patients after a myocardial infarction. Now, there's been one small study that included approximately 1,600 patients that found that there really wasn't a difference in clinical outcomes for those patients treated with spironolactone compared to placebo, but there was a decrease in mortality in the subgroup of patients who had STEMI. So the CLEAR trial is now asking a very important question as to whether or not routine treatment with spironolactone benefits all patients after an acute MI. And then, Eric, how did the CLEAR trial work? Steve, the study was one half of a multifactorial two-by-two -two study. In this part of the study, patients who had either an, a, a, a STEMI or an NSTEMI with additional risk factors for the development of heart failure were randomized to receive either spironolactone or placebo after having a coronary intervention. There were two co-primary composite outcomes, death from cardiovascular causes or new or worsening heart failure, and the same outcomes plus new MI or stroke. There were several additional secondary outcomes. The trial enrolled over 7,000 patients. The first primary outcome occurred in 183 in the drug-treated group and 220 in the placebo-treated group, while the secondary, second primary outcome was seen in 280 and 294 people, respectively. Neither of these values were significantly different. However, spironolactone was relatively safe. Thus, this trial failed to show that spironolactone was effective for either primary outcome. Jane, is this going to affect practice? Well, given that the investigators found that there wasn't any difference in either of the two co-primary outcomes for clinical events, it tells us that spironolactone is probably not necessary as an add-on therapy for all patients who pre present with an acute MI. Now, this doesn't mean that it shouldn't be given to those patients who have a clinical indication for the drug, such as those with heart failure, but it does tell us that we don't need to routinely prescribe spironolactone for patients after an acute MI. Jane, spironolactone isn't the only drug with mineralocorticoid activity. Could other agents be more effective? Well, that's an interesting question. And, you know, because the mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists differ in terms of the receptors they block, and this is what's associated with some of their side effects, or whether or not they're steroidal or non steroidal, um, it, you know, it's not clear. We haven't answered that question yet. So it seems like we'll need more information with those agents really to be able to answer that question. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Eric. This study can be found at NEJM.org.